Assalamu alaikum, peace be on all of you. This is Muzammil and in this video I'll talk about how to conduct cluster analysis in SPSS. But before we start doing that, let's try to understand what cluster analysis is. Cluster analysis is a statistical technique that's used to group, let's say, people together or it's used to group respondents together or firms together. So it's a grouping technique. Now, there are two main types of cluster analysis. One is a hierarchical cluster analysis, and the other is a non-hierarchical cluster analysis. Within hierarchical cluster analysis, we have different methods. And within non-hierarchical cluster analysis, we again have different methods. Let's take a look at where the option for hierarchical and non-hierarchical cluster analyses is in SPSS. We'll click on Analyze, then we'll go to Classify here. And here we have three clustering techniques. Now the first one is hierarchical clustering technique, which I spoke about. But we can see that there is no non-hierarchical clustering technique here. That's because K means clustering technique is a non-hierarchical clustering technique. And the reason it's shown here is because it's the most commonly used, the most popular non-hierarchical clustering technique. So in SPSS, it's put there as non-hierarchical clustering technique. And the third one here is two-step clustering technique. It's kind of a combination of hierarchical clustering technique and non-hierarchical clustering technique. In that, in two-step clustering technique, Pre-clusters are formed, first of all, from the, from the respondents or from the firms. And later on, those pre-clusters are used as cases in the second step, which is based on hierarchical clustering techniques. So the first step is kind of non-hierarchical clustering. The second step is, uh, the second step is hierarchical clustering. Further, in two-step clustering technique, and this is the only technique, like that in which you can use both categorical as well as metric variables. So that's two-step st clustering technique. In k-means clustering technique, let's take a look at this one first, k-means clustering technique. What happens is that uh, we assign a predetermined number of clusters that we want. So let's say, given the literature support we have, uh, we want a three cluster solution and after that we'll we'll tell SPSS to divide let's say respondents on the basis of five criteria let's say those five criteria are this one two three four and five so I'm telling SPSS divide my respondents and label them by cases ID on the basis of these five criteria and I'll put them here under variables. Next thing I do is to click on iterate and ensure that 10 is the maximum iterations here. That's the normal one. And under save, if you want to save the cluster memberships, which means if you want to save the cluster memberships as a variable in SPSS here, then you'll click on this one and then we'll click on continue. We'll click on options and if we want we can have a NOAA table and if we want we can have cluster information for each case so that we find out which respondent which firm or which person is clustered in which cluster but that's you know if you really want that information it'll be a long table we'll click on continue here and then we'll click on OK and we'll have the result here we can see that we have a three cluster solution here and these are means, so uh, this is how we have obtained three clusters. Now, if we want to see those clusters, but before that, we can see here that in first cluster, we have 72 respondents. In second cluster, we have 163 respondents. And in third cluster, we have 104 respondents. This is the total number of respondents. Now, if we want to see those clusters, we can see them also in variable view here. So this is the cluster that was created just now. And within this variable, there'll be three clusters. We can go to analyze descriptive frequencies. 
and we can check those clusters here. See, we got three clusters. Again, the same information in the first cluster, 72 respondents, in the second one, 163, and then in the third one, 104. So that's briefly what uh, k-means cluster means. You predetermine a number of clusters, and then you divide your data on, on some parameters into those number of clusters. The second clustering technique is hierarchical clustering technique, which is a very popular clustering technique. So we'll click on hierarchical clustering technique. And here again, we kill SPSS to divide our respondents and label them by cases. And the criteria we tell SPSS to divide those respondents on, again, these five. So I'll put them here. I'll click on statistics and ensure that agglomeration schedule is selected. Continue. Under plots, I'll ensure that dendrogram is selected. It's kind of a visual way of looking at your clusters. And under method, like I said before, under hierarchical clustering method, there are different under hierarchical clustering technique, there are different methods. Most commonly, Ward's method is used, and here we choose equilibrium distance. And under transform values, under standardized, we normally choose either Z scores or range minus one to one. And then we'll click on continue. Again, if we want to save the cluster membership, we can choose the options here. Now the beauty of hierarchical clustering is that you can have a uh, list of different clusterings. For example, you can ask for a single cluster solution, which doesn't make much sense. Or uh, when I say single cluster solution, I can type here that I want three clusters. That's what single cluster solution means. Or I can ask for, let's say, uh, uh, two cluster solutions and then till five cluster solutions means I'll have two cluster solutions, three cluster solutions, four cluster solutions, and five cluster solutions. But in here, let me let's say we want only a three cluster solution. Then we'll click on oh, we'll click on continue, and then OK. Still running clustering, and here is the agglomeration schedule telling us which cases or which respondents are put in which clusters, long table. And this is the dendrogram, like I said, a visual way of looking at your, at your clusters. Now, uh, we, we can, of course, go about interpreting it, but let's look at the clusters that were created. Here is the clusters that were created. It says we have created three clusters. Now, let's look at those clusters. I'll run a frequencies test here, and there we go. We have three clusters here. By using hierarchical clustering technique and Ward's method, 136 respondents were put in the first cluster, 130 in second cluster, 73 in the third cluster. So this is the, the, the technique that we used for clustering our data. Now, the third and the last type of clustering I would like to mention is the two-step clustering technique. It's a very interesting technique and a very useful one. Like I said before, you can put, uh, you can put categorical variables in here. You can put continuous variables in here as well. So again, I'll put the continuous variable here. Again, same five criteria and put them under continuous variables. I don't want to put any categorical variables here. Normally, categorical variables would be like gender or type of industry, so on and so forth. Here, I tell SPSS that the number of cl clusters, the, the not maximum number of clusters I want is five. And uh, I'll click on options. I'll not change anything here. I'll clean up click on op, I'll click on output, and if I want to see how the clusters differ across industries, then I can put the evaluation fields here. And if I want to create cluster membership, means I want to save the variable in SPSS, I'll click on create cluster membership variable. Then I'll click on continue and OK. 
So this is the output I have. It tells me here that I divided my data on the basis of five parameters. Remember those five continuous variables? And it tells me that it was able to generate two clusters and tells me that uh, the cluster quality is fair. It's slightly into good, so it's okay. To get further information out of this, I'll double click on this chart here. When I do that, I'll have this window popping up. On the right hand side here, it tells me the clusters that I obtained. Now, 63.1% of the respondents were put in cluster 1, and 369 were put in cluster 2. I can further analyze it. I can click on predictor importance and see which predictors were important. So OC.harm is the most important criterion in creating these variables, in creating these clusters. Now I can remove type of industry here by just sliding it, and then I have a better view of uh, importance of the predictors. Now, I can go to the left-hand side here, and I can click on Model Summary and choose Clusters. Now, this one gets interesting here. Here, it tells me that there are two clusters, 1 and cluster 2. In cluster 1, this is the mean of the first parameter that I chose. This is the mean of the second parameter that I chose, so on and so forth. So, in second cluster, we can see that the mean is low in comparison to mean of the parameters in cluster 1. We can, of course, click on display here. And when we click on evaluation fields, up comes type of industry. Remember, if we want to further see the differences across industries, we can click on this one. So I'll click on OK. And then it gives me a new chart. And here I can see that the most frequently occurring category in cluster 2 is 4, as we can see here. Oops. <laughs> okay, and the most frequently occurring category in cluster 1 is 2. That means industry 2. We, we need to go back to our, our uh, data view and variable view and find out what 2 means. What, which industry does it signify? Because this is a categorical variable. And further, we can, of course, explore these options. And uh, these are quite interesting options and easy to understand. So this is what a uh, two-step two cluster is about. Uh, different clustering techniques, uh, again, two types of cat techniques, hierarchical clustering techniques and non-hierarchical clustering techniques. Uh, in hierarchical clustering techniques, what happens is that uh, algorithm creates a number of clusters initially, which is equal to the number of cases or respondents. And then after that, it goes on grouping them together on the basis of similarity. And in case of non-hierarchical clustering techniques, what, hap what happens is, uh, is that seeds are created, means categories or clusters are created, and then the cases or respondents are put in those clusters. So these are two different uh, techniques. And the third one we spoke about was, uh, the third technique was two-step cluster, which involves uh, using both categorical as well as non-categorical variables to classify our data. So that was uh, a brief overview of cluster analysis and different clustering techniques. I hope this video has been useful. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.